his old roommates. He said that he had thought of responding in the media to their comments, but then elected to take the high road. Fred Reed with a carry brought down by Eric Taylor and Doug Brown of the Bombers, another who was publicly critical of Foley's decision to apparently agree to terms with BC verbally and then elect to sign a contract with Toronto. I don't know why he'd be chiming in, but, uh, you know, can't we all just get along here? Just, just do our jobs and go out there and play some football. And Ricky Foley's where he belongs, and Argonauts welcome with open arms. Giles on second and long, fires it, and he has his man as he completes it out there to Brock Ralph, and that'll be good for Winnipeg first down. Yeah, I like the idea of what uh, Winnipeg's doing here, moving the launching point of Steven Giles, and he's going to just, this is a full sprint out. He's got a posse out in front of him. It's just a comeback route, nicely done by Ralph, the top of your screen there, making that look easy. Just, and you have to respect his speed, and that's why that comeback route is going to be there for him today. From the point, and this is Fred Reed. Battles his way up to the 45-yard line before Ricky Foley comes up and makes the stop. Yeah, Jason Pottinger, um, you know, misses in the hole. That's what Fred Reed did well last week. Uh, and, and making Pottinger miss right in the hole here. And he's, bang, spin move. Out of Pottinger's reach. Into Foley. Making another play. Another play. He's all over the field right now, Gordon. Second and five, Giles can't find anyone open. And now here comes trouble. Foley got blocked nicely by Reed. Giles leaps across the 50, and he's got a Winnipeg first down as Evan McCullough took his legs out. Is Ricky Foley's right here. Just check him out and what he does and his hustle and, you know, what it takes. You know, he just made a run stop last time on Reed. He's got Butler's face here. Giles is going to step up, says, no, there's Ricky. Then Fred gets him, and Giles goes airborne over McCullough, picks up a first down. So things happen fast in the Canadian Football League, and good example of that right there. First down from the 52. This is Reed again. It's the first wave. Gets by Flemons and spins down to the 50 for a gain of eight before Flemons finally tripped him up. Head coach Paul LaPolice, Gordon, you know, said last week that's what Fred did a good job of is making people miss at the point of contact. And he asked all your running backs to make the first man miss. Little counter play. Got help out front. Douglas is pulling. Reed says, I'm bailing on you. I'm going to get what I can here. And turns it out for a good situation for the Winnipeg Blue Marks, putting them in second and short here. Bombers still looking for their first road win of the year. Second down, Reed again. And he'll move the sticks as Ron Clemens finally makes the stop on him. Fred Reed, twice the last three weeks, has gone over 100 yards, but last week did it with a vengeance. 148 yards on 17 carries, a pair of touchdowns, including a 61-yard touchdown scamper. Longest of the year. He was special last week, and they just kept feeding him and made Stephen Giles' day a lot easier. Only had to throw the ball 23 times. He's six for 23 today. Way fake, fired up. There was Bowman makes the tackle, and Ron Clemens came out to help make the stop on Darius Bowman, who gets a gain of about four. In the year in which star running backs have been somewhat forgotten in some places, you think about Reed and Winnipeg. Yeah. And certainly, we've also seen it in Hamilton with only, DeAndre Cobb. There's Reed's only second time going over 100 yards this year. But uh, more of that, you know, and this is the type of year, about now to the end of the, end of the regular season, where teams really need to start functioning on the run because you need to run the football and dominate the line of scrimmage from that cold weather. Giant quarterback drive. has got the first down and more inside the 35 down to the 34 where he's brought down once again. Tristan Black was up to make the stop. And Ricky Foley there as well. Design play, nice, nicely done here. Steven Giles, just design quarterback draw. Nice job by the bat right here, just staying on his man, burying him, actually taking him to the ground and stapling him to the turf. And Giles says, thank you. 
for the path to success, and I'm going to take it and move the chains. Nice job, Dominic. Nice and he is wrapped up right away by Evan McCullough, who had him from the word go. Yeah, a little pressure off the edge. Why? Because the you know, running a little bunch formation, so it brings him closer to the fray. You can see it on your right side. It, it, it's it's real simple. He's brought to the action. Nobody blocks him. It's up top of your screen. He's coming off the edge. Nobody's going to touch him. And Fred says, this is not good. Tries his patented spit move. Seen that from Corey Boyd right here in Toronto a bunch this season. But nice job in open field. By McCullough. Should be the final play of the opening quarter. Giles wants to go deep, can't find it, and he's off and running. And now he has to slide, and he just gets under Willie Middlebrooks, who had him teed up. But he'd be well short of a first down. Three nothing Winnipeg after the opening 15 minutes. It's Sears Days, where you can find unbelievable. We'll talk about, but one thing we have seen for a Toronto Argonne defense that allows more yards than any other in the league. The addition of Ricky Foley's made a big difference. He really has. He's been active, forced to be active, because you know, Winnipeg has been holding the football the entire first quarter. If that continues, Gord, I can tell you, he's going to see what type of shape he's in and remember what type of shape he had to be in to play in the Canadian Football League. It's totally different than playing down the National Football League where there's so many stoppages to play. Up here, it's been constant, and he's been constantly been called on to make plays here in the first quarter. Pilardi will try a 41-yard field goal to extend the Bomber lead. And Chad Owens is back if he misses, but he does not. And the Bombers increase their lead to six. So a low-scoring opening half so far, and part of that is due to great defensive play on both sides of the ball, as you see Ricky Fuller. Doesn't look winded at all there to me, you know, but he's been on the field the entire first quarter. Last year, he was special, and justifiably so. The Canadian voted the most outstanding Canadian of the season for plays like this. Tied to the league lead with 12 quarterback sacks. Couldn't get his number 95 here in Toronto. Zero Kuali wouldn't give it up. I don't blame him, and I'm not going to ask Zero to, to give it up because that guy's a beast. 95 special teams player Kuali is just put together. It looks like a mini miniature Ronald Clemens, and a uh, guy makes plays for him on special teams. I don't know if you get a chance, folks watching, key on him on special teams. Number 95 is pretty special, but um, Foley is uh, looks pretty slim in that nine. I like it on him. Here's Owens, takes the kick off at the 15-yard line. Owens has a seam. Here he goes up to the 40-yard line. And brought down at the 41 as James Green makes the stop. We asked Argo coach Jim Barker what Ricky Foley brings to the table. Ricky's a speed edge guy. Ricky's a guy who gives a tackle a different type of look. Uh, he's a guy who can run down the quarterbacks in this league that can run. Uh, Ricky can run stride for stride with them. He can do so many different things, and he's a great special teams player. So um, the day he decided to become a Toronto Argonaut, we became a much better team. Argo start at their own 41-yard line. And here's Aldridge on the carry. And he runs into Doug Brown and a host of others. And last week, this Winnipeg defense put a hurt on Saskatchewan. The Rough Riders did not get inside the Winnipeg 25-yard line in the game. That's incredible. 13 times they had to punt or the ball was turned over on the possessions. Bombers held them to 2.7 yards average per first down, which is just incredible because that really puts the defense in the upper hand there. Just dominant performance last week. Aldridge got three at second and seven, and there's the sack by Doug Brown. He may not love the pants, but he looks pretty slick in them. Oh, uh, yeah, and, you know, he's not worried about his pants. You know, talking before the ball game, he says, you know, I wish they had, like, a strike down. It kind of makes my leg look bigger. But Doug Brown is right here, right in the middle of your screen. He just a little swim move, a little uppercut, and nobody really touches him. And Cleo Levin says, what is going on? But Dougie says, you know, for a tall, slender guy, 
you know, I'd like a stripe down the side of my pants because uh, right now my legs feel really skinny with no, with no pop there. And uh, I said, well, we'll try to get your pants in there and get you a shot of your long legs. And you keep playing like that, Cameron be on you all day long, Doug. Four on the kick, a low driving punt to Devon Johnson of the 32-yard line. And Johnson stumbles ahead. Out to the 48. Doug Brown, the Angels one for another sack. There's Levi Sitt. Yeah. 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 held Saskatchewan to a deuce last week, and so far they've held Toronto off the board completely here. As Stephen Giles and the offense go to work. 30 front. Red Reed on first down. Slices through that Argo defense down to the 50 yard line. A pickup of 12 and a Winnipeg first down. Jeremy Unertle up to make the stop. Yeah, and just, you know, why not run right at him? You've got Douglas who outweighs. Foley by a good 100 pounds, I would think. And, and you know, run right at him. That's a weakness. You know, you take a speed guy that's quick off the edge, you run right at him and take advantage of him being like the backside. Again, on first down, and again, it's Reed. He battles his way to the Toronto 45-yard line. As the Bombers continue to bang away at this Toronto D, Toronto defensively, allows more plays, more first downs, and more yards than any other defense in the CFL. They make you earn your way up the football field and be consistent. And it's difficult to do that in the CFL with only three downs to work with. And uh, that's the philosophy behind it. That could be a bit of a misleading statistic for Second and five, and under pressure, and he is sacked by Kevin Huntley. And Huntley with his seventh sack of the year. Well, we we quite possibly have the two biggest nose guards or three or one techniques, and he's right here, folks. He can't miss him. He's the big he's the big boy right there. Throws off Khan, just slaps him aside, and just dwarfs Giles, gulfs him. Renault looking for the sideline. This is Owens from the five, and he is stopped right away. Great special team stop made by Alex Suber. There is, however, a flag on the play. It was a 54-yard punt and no return. Now, the call is holding against Toronto. Give him another two and a half yards here. Holding Toronto number five. While the ball was in the air, we'll go back half the distance to the goal from where they caught it, and it's first down. They'll take the two and a half. So the Argos will start deep in their own territory. we we'll come back to Toronto right after this. Back in Toronto, the story was supposed to be how Winnipeg's ends would take advantage of Toronto's reconstituted offensive line, but it's been the man in the middle who's been the story. Yeah, Doug Brown says, not so fast. I'm going to put Ben Zyl, uh, Picard on skates and say hello to Cleo Lemon. I'm going to take on two, get off of that, and say hello to Cleo Lemon one more time, and then I'm just going to run a straight shot, show my speed, put Cleo Lemon to the ground. Saying, Odell and Phillip, I'm tired of you getting all the spotlight. Look at me. Take to Johnson on first down. Lemon under pressure. It's complete as he found James Robinson, but it looked to me as though Brandon Rideau might have been the intended target. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that's the truth there because um, I don't even know if he saw Robinson who ended up catching the ball because Rideau's coming on underneath. He's coming across the screen right to left. There he is. Ball's thrown. Bang. And then there's Robinson picking it up. So very well could have been to Robinson and Rideau just coming from the wide side to the short side got there too quickly drawing coverage underneath that throw cloud in the picture. Whatever it was first down for Toronto and an important one. Exactly. Again a play fake on first down. Lots of time for Lemon. Another first down up to the 25 yard line. Stop is made by Javon Johnson but Jermaine Copeland has a pickup. 
of 19 yards. Yeah, Jermaine Copeland's right here, and he's just coming off, and he's going to run a dig pattern or a crossing pattern right across the field. He gets to his depth, pushes Javon Johnson out of his back pedal, snaps across the flatly moving across the field, does a nice couple between the legs and a spin around after the catch moving change. Jermaine Copeland is happy to be back. So the Argos have him back. They were 0-3 without it. First down, and Jeff Johnson has room to run out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Marcellus Bowman stops him, but not before the Argonauts move the chains again. Love Jeff Johnson, nine years with the team, and, you know, I talked to him on Wednesday this week, and I said, Jeff, you get no respect, and he just kind of looked at me and rolled his eyes because, and, and here he just loves the opportunity. This is a great back who works at it very, very hard and diligently, and he just does everything for the Argonauts. It's good to see him get some touches here. Now Brian Crawford on the play fake, and Lemon has lots of time and room to run. There he goes, Cleo Lemon. Across midfield in the Winnipeg territory at the Bomber 54-yard line, and you were flagging him to go right away. Yeah, put it on, let it go, man. You had to open the field to your right. You know, everything's brought back to the left. And oftentimes when that happens, you know, it's designed. And the quarterback knows this. Comes back, he knows everything's coming right to left. And it's cover one coverage. Everybody's manned up. And he's got a lot of green space in front of him. He takes advantage of it moving the chains. This drive began at the Toronto three-yard line. Oh, hi, Jay. Again on first down, it's a runaway jelly. And the pass hits his foot and falls incomplete. And so the Argonauts, who got off to a slow start in this game, 20 yards in total offense in their first four possessions.